So, Twitch seems like a big deal when it comes to marketing games, right? And especially for independent games or smaller games. Just look at Punch Club. Before the game released on Steam, Tiny Build and Lazy Bear challenged the Twitch audience to beat their game in Twitch Plays Punch Club. So in a style that is similar to Twitch Plays Pokemon, the viewers took the challenge and ended up beating the game in only two days. That's five days less than what the developers predicted. Kathy Astromoff in her GDC talk states that 1.2 million viewers watched and took part in Twitch Plays Punch Club and estimates that Twitch drove an estimated 25% of Punch Club's sales. Which is crazy if you ask me. In this video, I'll be showing you the most basic form of Twitch chat integration into your game. Users type a command into chat and the game responds, simple. Then, in later videos as part of a larger project I'm working on, I'll show you how to make better use of this chat information. I think it's also best to have a disclaimer here. The method used in this video is only good for educating you on how this can work. As you'll see later, the use of a Twitch password is not stored in a very secure way and it's not how you should release a game to the public, but we'll look at that in later videos. Okay, start out by creating a new Unity project. Then when it opens, immediately save your scene and name it scene underscore 001. Right click into the hierarchy and create an empty game object. Name this one Twitch Chat. Then right click into the assets folder and create a C sharp script. Also name the script Twitch Chat. Drag the Twitch Chat script over and onto the Twitch Chat object in the inspector. Then double click and open the Twitch Chat script for editing. I like to remove these comments here to make things a little bit more tidy. The first thing to type into your script is using system and then system.componentmodel, system.net.sockets and system.io. Next create some variables which is private TCP client, Twitch client and private stream reader, reader, private stream writer, writer. Then our public variables, which is public string, username, password, and channel name. And these are your Twitch information, but the password is different. It's from twitchapps.com slash TMI. We now want to create a method that will connect us to the Twitch chat. So type in private void connect. And inside that we want to assign our variables from before. So Twitch client equals new TCP client. And then our string is irc.chat.twitch.tv comma and the port is 6667. Then we have reader equals new stream reader twitch client dot get stream. And writer equals new stream writer Twitch client dot get stream. To connect, we have writer dot write line pass plus password and then writer dot write line nick plus username. Now these all have to be written exactly like you can see on screen. And then writer dot write line user plus username plus space eight space star space colon plus username and writer dot write line join space hash plus channel name and writer dot flush to clear it out at the end. So this method connect will connect us to the Twitch client and we want to do this as soon as we start the game. So in our void start we have to call connect and then in update we also want to check if we are still connected. So if during the game something happens and the Twitch client is disconnected, we check for it with if not Twitch client dot connected. So if we are not connected, then we call our connect method to reconnect again. Next up, we want to read our chat. So create another method, private void read chat. And then we want to check if Twitch client dot available is greater than zero. And if it is, we want to read a line. So ver message equals reader dot read line. And then we want to print the message with print message. And that's the same as doing debug dot log. Then with that created, 
copy our rechat method and put it into our update as you can see here. Then go back to Unity. Now that we're back in Unity, click on the Twitch chat game object and look at the inspector. The Twitch script now contains spaces for username, password, and channel name. These are the public variables from our script. So type in the username and the channel name. Then to get the password, we go to the website link I've shown before, which is twitchapps.com forward slash TMI. Once you have the password, place it in the password box in Unity. And this is why I mentioned at the start that this method is not very secure in storing information. When you run the game now, have a look at the console. It has a whole bunch of information that shows you've connected to Twitch, like I've shown here. If you type into your Twitch chat, it will also display here, but with a bunch of info we don't actually want. So, the next part for us is to get rid of that information we don't need. So go back to the script editor. Go to the read chat method, and just under where we read in the current message, type if message.contains p-r-i-v-m-s-g. And that checks if it's a message sent into the Twitch chat by a user. Now the first bit of information that we want is the user's name. So we get the user's name by splitting it from the string. So var split point equals message dot index off and it's an exclamation mark comma one and var chat name equals message dot substring zero comma split point and chat name equals chat name dot substring one. The next thing we want is to get the user's message by splitting it from the string, which is split point equals message dot index off colon comma one. Message equals message dot substring split point plus one. Then print string dot format zero colon one and that's our chat name and message. Then you can go ahead and delete the print message below. Go back to Unity again and run the game. Type something into your Twitch chat and watch as it is displayed in the console. We now have the username and message displayed alone without any extra information that we don't need. For the game, however, we don't want to only display information in the console. So let's add text to our game. Right click in the hierarchy, go to UI and select text. Also name the text Twitch chat. Go to the game view and mess around with the transform to get the text to display in the area of the screen you want it to be and the size of the box the text can display inside of. Then type chat colon into the text box. And edit the size of the font and the color to which you prefer. You can even make it bold also. I recommend for this tutorial going to the main camera and changing the clear flags from skybox to solid color then choosing the background color that goes best with your text color. Now back to editing our script. At the top of our script add using unity engine.ui, then add a public text variable called chatbox. Inside our read chat method just below where we print add in chatbox.text equals chatbox.text plus backslash n plus string.format zero one chat name message that essentially looks at our chat box adds in the text takes a new line and adds in our new message you can also get rid of or comment out the print message above and then go back to unity click again on the twitch chat game object in the inspector we have a new space for the public text variable chat box drag the text Twitch chat over and into this space. Run the game and write something into your Twitch chat. It should now be displayed in our game. So far we have learned how to get the chat information and display it. We now want to use this info to play a game. So follow what I do here and create a simple game. Click the main camera and tilt it so that we have it facing down at an angle. By right clicking in the hierarchy and adding in a cube object, you can quickly throw together a little track with some obstacles like this. You can change the sizes of the cubes and positions of the cubes in the transform in the inspector. Once you have a track, we need a player to control. Add in another cube, rename it player, then in the inspector, click add component and select a rigid body. Let's change the player's color too. 
So in the Assets folder, right click, hover over Create and choose Material. Name it Matte Blue and in the Inspector, while you have Matte Blue selected, change the color to blue. Click play and you can see our player is now positioned at the start of a track. Now back to update the script, some more. Add public rigid body player and public int speed to the start of our class. Then at the bottom add a new method called game inputs and pass in the string chat inputs. We are going to use if statements to check what chat input is. So type if chat inputs dot to lower equals left then player dot add force vector three dot left times speed multiply by 1000 and repeat this two more times change the values to right and forward as shown here we will be calling game inputs from within read chat as shown here also and we pass in message as our string variable now back to unity one last time Select the Twitch chat game object and in the inspector drag our player into the space provided. Next, set the speed to 5. Click on the player object again and resize the X scale to 3. Click play and go to your Twitch chat to control the game, typing in either left, right or forward. And there you have it, you're playing a game using Twitch chat. But this was a bit crazy, so let's try changing our speed and seeing how that works. I set it to 1 this time. And as you can see, we're still rotating quite a bit. So if you select the player game object, you can set constraints on the rigid body so that the object cannot rotate. You can freeze the X, Y and Z rotation. And play again, and this time it's much better. That's it for this tutorial. As I mentioned at the start, I'm working on some big project and have some cool things planned for this channel. So make sure to subscribe if you're interested, as I'll be making some announcements very soon. Okay, that's enough. Bye.